Well, I've got another dual processor motherboard to take a look at in this video. It's going to be this guy right here. We're going to be comparing this to the P2BDS. See how this particular one gets along with that. And uh, I also did some tweaking, shall we say, to that board as well. Installing Surge Pack 5. That's the tweaking, but it changed a lot of stuff. So let's go ahead and get this video started. The motherboard is an Acorp 6A 815EPD dual socket 370 board with a pair of Pentium 3 1 GHz processors installed. Dual socket 370 on an Intel 815EP chipset. This board is said to also support dual Celerons as well, so I might be putting that to the test at some point in the future. During my research of this motherboard, it would appear, based on Anantec's review of the motherboard, that when it was released, this was the first company to demonstrate that while Intel's 815EP chipset uh, did not officially support SMP, that it was in fact capable of doing so. It appears this ended up also being the only company that ever hacked Chipzilla's 815EP chipset to work with a dual processor configuration, and they actually managed to sell this motherboard at a fairly low price. The layout of this board bears a striking resemblance to that of another dual socket 370 board that I have, the ABIT VP6. In the case of the VP6, however, the chipset used is a VIA Apollo Pro 133A, which is a more common chipset to find on dual socket 370 motherboards of this era. It really kind of makes me wonder if there was some kind of a collaboration between the two companies at this time. Besides the fact that the 815EP chipset properly supports 133 MHz bus with a proper clock divider allowing the AGP port to operate at the proper frequency, the real benefit of this chipset is the 4X AGP, as opposed to the older 2X spec on the BX chipset, which allows for higher speed GPUs that simply won't operate on the 2X AGP bus, mainly because of the voltage requirement, and of course support for Tualatins, at least in theory anyway, which I will actually be messing uh, with on this board at some point in the future. As you will see in the benchmarks later on in this video, the 4X AGP speed actually has no improvements to the benchmarks over the 2X AGP. Sadly, the RAM limitation of 512 megabytes, well, that, that does suck, but 512 megabytes of RAM is, is really plenty for this era of games anyway, so it's, it's not a big deal for me. The P2BDS motherboard that I demonstrated in the previous video has proven to be somewhat unreliable, unfortunately. I suspect after doing a hell of a lot of work and try to re trying to uh, resolve the issues of the blue screens that I kept having, uh, that the capacitors might be causing the instability, as the motherboard will randomly go apeshit on me, uh, often after just, you know, a cold start. Um, but if I let it sit powered on for a few hours and then start using it, it manages to run perfectly fine. So I, I really don't know what's going on with it, but the capacitors seem to be the likely possible candidate given their, given their age as to why this is uh, happening anyway. So far I have absolutely no issues whatsoever in the stability department on the A-Corp motherboard, uh, which is a good thing. The BIOS on this board is a bit limited, but it's it's got some nice options in it. It's, it's, it's pretty average, actually, but it allows for some tweaking of the memory timings, and it does have a jumper-free bus speed uh, in the BIOS there, but it doesn't have any voltage adjustments, so overclocking on this board would be pretty limited due to the, to the uh, lack of voltage adjustments. It does have jumper settings on the board for base clock speed, and it would seem... The bus speed option in the BIOS starts from that point that's set on the motherboard, in this case 133. I haven't messed with the jumper yet to see what the full range in the BIOS actually ends up being, though it, it does appear to go up to 160 megahertz, which is pretty nice. Whether it can actually operate at that speed, who knows. Maybe I'll tinker with that at some point in the future, but for now it's working fine as it is, and I'd like to you know, at least manage to get through the benchmarks without too much grief. The board also has an onboard Promise Fast Track ATA100 RAID controller, which is a very good controller, but I'm not using it uh, in this video. I'm choosing to stick to the Intel ATA66 onboard instead there. 
As sort of a baseline to compare this motherboard with, I am including the results from the Pentium uh, 3, the P2BDS there, but with revised uh, benchmarks, as I have since done some fiddling and fixing to try to get more stability out of the board. Uh, installing SP5 on Windows 2000 yielded a totally different result in all the benchmarks due to, uh, I think, the bundled DirectX 9C. Uh, whereas before I was running 81B, and as you will see, it benefited in some of the benchmarks, whereas others it kind of hit the performance a bit, and in some cases it was quite a hit. The video card is once again the Prophet 3, GeForce 3 video card, 64 megabytes of RAM, and uh, Soundbuster Live X Gamer. Benchmarks are ran with the sound on just like they were in the last video with the P2BDS. I feel that this is a more accurate representation of benchmarks as well. Unless you don't like hearing what's going on in the game, you will be playing the game with sound enabled. So benchmarks ran with sound disabled, uh, in my opinion, are not a true representation of the way the game would actually perform while it's being played. I also ran the benchmarks with Windows XP Professional to give you kind of an idea of what the performance difference is between 2000 and XP. Since this motherboard has an AGP 4X slot, it allows me to also run benchmarks with the best AGP card that I own, the GeForce 7800 GS, to show whether or not the GeForce 3 is holding back the performance of the processors a little bit there. A cabal of the most violent and skilled warriors in known space, selected to fight in a grand tournament. Now it is 2341. Fifty years have passed since the founding of Deathmatch. Profits from the tournament number in the hundreds of billions. You have been selected to fight in the professional league by the Leandre Rules Board. Your strength and brutality are legendary. The time has come to prove you are the best. To crush your enemies. To win the tournament.
Well, as you can see from the benchmarks there, that Windows XP does hit the performance a little bit, and installing Service Pack 5 on Windows 2000 yields a completely different benchmark result, except in Unreal Tournament. That seems to be CPU bound or bus bound or something, because it performs identical pretty much on all these mother these two motherboards and all these uh, both these video cards. Doesn't uh, doesn't seem to matter what card I put in it. Um, driver version was 9179, 70, something like that, 73, 9173, something like that. Anyway, um, yeah, and uh, it's pretty interesting to see. Um, I will be playing with a pair of Tualatins in this motherboard as well as the VP6. We'll do the VP6 in another video. And uh, yeah, so uh, anyway, um, this board is not too bad. I think it's a decent board. Um, performance is a little bit less than the uh, PTBDS, um, and so that's kind of to be expected because the 815 chipset in general was close to BX performance level. So, um, except in a couple tests, everything was just a little bit lower or about the same as the PTBDS. When you add the 7800GS on this motherboard, we do get a little bit of a better result in a couple of the benchmarks. Um, not by a whole lot, but it's still worth... Um, I, I think they did a good job on this board. Now, it was a low-cost board, and it still works just fine, so obviously they built it pretty well. And like I said, I, this board does resemble a lot of the VP6 and the layout of stuff, and uh, uses the same brand of capacitors, too. If it didn't say A-Corp on it, you really would probably think it was an A-Bit board, actually. but. BIOS is a little limited, that kind of sucks, but uh, that's alright, that's alright. It's a good board, uh, it's a good candidate for maybe a project, um, but we'll see. So anyway, take care everyone, see you again right here on the Wayback Tech Channel, peace out everybody.